it's that Christmas light time of year again, isn't it? And lots of you have asked me to do a bit of a Christmassy film and explain something that's kind of Christmassy that you can photograph. Well, how about some little sparkly lights, a little bit of a Christmas scene, something like that? Great idea, you say. What are you doing in a street like that in the middle of the day when there aren't any Christmas lights? Brown, you idiot. Well, come with me. There are a few Christmas lights just kind of hanging around here. And there's a reason why we're out here right now as opposed to a little bit later. So first off, Christmas lights. See these wires up above my head? They've got some little sparkly lights on them. And as you can see, there's a couple of trees like poking out the side of the building. We've got lights doing the zigzaggy thing. Hello, Emmett. Hello. You all right? How are you? I'm very good. We're making a well. film about photographing. You're in a film now. I'm in the film now. Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, <clears throat> We've got a lovely, lovely Christmas tree up here above Umit's restaurant. We've got, let's just keep wandering down. There's a couple of other trees, as you can see, just sort of poking out there. This one, I don't even know if you can see it, you might as we get closer. But there's some little sparkly lights just sort of poking out and just starting to twinkle on there. But something that's really interesting with this little street is that at night, it kind of looks really quite quaint because cobbles. And it just kind of works, and you get these lovely little bits of light coming out of the shop windows, etc. Now, I believe tomorrow is the shortest day of the year for us here in sunny, warm, beautiful, dry, happy England, he said ironically. So therefore, we should have nice low light before all the shops close. So why am I here in daylight? Well, come over here. And let's have a little look back the other way, because then you can see what I'm thinking. We're here in daylight because there's no point rushing out to do a sort of evening, sort of twinkly light Christmassy scene when it's already sort of getting dark. It's always best to go and recce the situation, think things through, kind of use those building blocks of photography, just kind of think about you know, what you're gonna do and how you're gonna make everything work together to make the picture happen. So that's why I'm down here whilst it's daylight. I want to figure out what the shot's going to be, how it's going to look, what do I want it to look like, and what kind of lights do I want? Well, obviously we want very low light, but think about magic hour. Magic hour is when the sky goes that lovely deep blue colour, sort of in between daylight and darkness. Now we've got a bit of cloud going on, but hopefully we're still going to get a little bit of that blue magic hour stuff going on. So what's our shot going to look like? Well, common sense says we're going to want a widish lens to try and encompass what's going on down the little street here. So let's just, I'm going to move back this way. Lorna's going to reverse into a pole. That's what that wobble was. Clumsy Lorna, clumsy. She's not saying anything. She's just looking at me, giving me the look. So let's see. Now let's just imagine you've got say, a 50 millimeter lens and you go to take this shot. Well you're going to end up with something that looks a bit like that, which is okay, but I think it's better if we shorten that focal length, get a bit more of the street going on, make it a little bit of a wider shot. So I'm going to pull that back to about 18 millimeters and just sort of see what we've got. Now that is much nicer, but look at that pole in the foreground. Look, this bad boy here, that's kind of a bit intrusive. So I want to try and minimize the impact of that. And that's why it's worth coming out to have a look and see what you're going to do before you start doing it. So to minimise the pole, let's go forward a bit, bend the knees a bit. What do I want to include in my shot? I really like this doorway here. Hopefully it's going to be open and the light will be on. There'll be lovely warm yellow light spilling out of the doorway. I love the Christmas tree up above. And these sort of windows, are they called casement windows? I don't know. But I really like those windows. So as we look on down the street, I think that's going to look lovely. So I want to include this doorway, the Christmas tree. This side's not quite so exciting at this end, so probably try and crop it off somewhere around here. Let's go back and have a go and see what we're going to want to do. Where do I need to stand? So as I move back a little, the other thing, of course, I want in my shot is lots of sky. This is going to be Christmassy. We want that lovely blue magic hour thing going on. I reckon I need to be somewhere around here. 
I reckon that is pretty much what our composition is going to look like. I'm using an 18mm lens. I might, when I come back, bring a slightly wider lens so I can experiment. But what I really wanted to do was to make sure I knew where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, and have an idea, a plan in place before we get that magic hour light, that blue sky, because it's only going to last 10 minutes. So now what we need to do, go and have a nice cup of coffee. Ladies! Michael! Oh, shit. Sorry. Right, now, okay. So the light level's dropped, as you can probably tell. And if you look down the street here, we can start to see a bit of blue going on in the sky now because it's cloudy. I don't know how much blue we're going to get. You need to kind of work through this as the light level drops because when it really hits it, if it does hit it, it's going to be only for a few seconds. <clears throat> I've got my spot here. As I said earlier, I might need to change lenses and I have. I'm now kind of working at about 15, 14, 15 millimetres because I want to include this doorway, which even though it's no longer open. We haven't got that yellow light spilling out, which I was hoping for. It just kind of leads you into the shot. Where am I focusing? I'm focusing just beyond this Christmas tree up here. Um, I'm gonna use a smallish aperture because I wanna get some depth of field. Let's have a look, where are we? What aperture am I using? I'm using F13. So that's gonna be nice and sharp. It'll keep the shutter speed fairly slow. So if anyone does walk down there, it's gonna let them blur nicely. I was hoping for a crowd, but I don't think we're going to get one. More business for my kissing. Anyway, right, enough of that. So let's just take a test shot and see what happens. And, oh, ISO. I'm using a really kind of lowish ISO. I'm about 200. I want it to be a nice kind of smooth um, tone in it. And nothing's moving. It doesn't really matter if I've got a long, slow shutter speed, which I have, which is four seconds. Let's just take a test exposure and see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got a nice composition. As you can probably see, that picture is much too bright. So why is that? Your camera's trying to brighten the whole thing up. The camera thinks the world is mid-grain. It's gonna try and make this shot daylight. We want it to look darker than that. So, underexpose. I'm gonna, let's have a look here. I'm just gonna underexpose this by a stop and take another one and see what it looks like. That's better, so we flick between the two you can see a marked improvement in the sky. But I think we're gonna to need to wait just a little bit longer until it's a bit darker. Two minutes have passed, the sky's got a little bit darker. Now there's a thing in your menu. It's called long exposure noise reduction. There it is. Now, I don't use it because if there's any noise, I prefer to sort the noise out in, in uh, Lightroom and sort out noise and stuff in there. Go away! <laughs> Have a good Christmas, mate. <laughs> Hecklers. Um, <laughs> I've forgotten where I was. I know where I was. Long exposure noise reduction, right? Now, the name would suggest that during a long exposure, it's going to reduce the amount of noise in the picture. But I prefer to do that myself in Lightroom. I'm not altogether sure what long exposure noise reduction does or how it works. It's probably something to do with the pixel elves and the pixel fairies. I'm guessing they kind of tone down their partying, make a little, little bit less noise because the neighbours, the goblins, don't really like it. And goblins it's are nasty, nasty bastards. It's a bit of spoil sport tonight. <laughs> right, look, great light. Let's just go again now. I like these people walking up the street because uh, they will hopefully record as a bit of a blur. Quick look at the people up the street, Lorna. And I'm going to take another one. Here we go. Look at that. That's really awesome. Hello. Oh Happy Christmas and all that. Look at that. We've got a little ghostly blur of people walking up the street. That's really cool. I love that. And look at that sky. That's just rock and roll. Okay, we're just going to wait a little bit longer. You can keep shooting these things as the sky darkens. Now we may reach a point when it's just gone black and then it's not fun at all. So we'll see you in a minute. Five minutes later, not even that, probably three minutes later, it's got a little bit darker. I don't know if you can even see, looking up the street here. Can you see Lorna? Yeah. Okay. The sky's going darker blue, even though we've got this kind of gray cloudy bit. Look at me, look at me, I'm a star. Right. And even though we've got this grey sky, we've still got the blueiness going on in there. So take another shot, work your way through it. Don't run around trying to take too many pictures. So let's take another. And I'm still working minus one stop. 
because I don't want the camera trying to turn my evening night shot into daylight. Look at the colours we've got going on. We've got that nice yellowy stuff. We've got great cloud detail in the sky. I think we need to wait a little bit longer still until it gets just that little bit darker. Meanwhile, I'm going to go and chase girls with a mistletoe. Sadly, no takers. Still, never mind. Again, the lights changed. Two minutes have passed, which isn't much time for girl chasing. Look at the sky now. In two minutes, it's changed again. <clears throat> it's got really, really dark. So let's shoot another one because we're starting to get some really great cloud detail going on up there. Here we go. Did you see him? <laughs> That's interesting. Look at that sky. Look how dramatic that sky looks. And it works so well against the yellowiness of the buildings. The yellowiness is being caused by the tungsten lights, which is absolutely awesome. And we've got the blueness in the sky. Now you can play with your white balance with this. Let's go to the white balance. And currently I'm on a sunny white balance. But I'm gonna change that, if I can find my white balance button, to a tungsten one. Why tungsten? The lighting down here is tungsten. So by going into a tungsten white balance, we've got the right colours down here in the street, but it's going to make the, bl the blue of the sky even bluer, but it might spoil that warm yellowiness. All you can do is test it. And I'm talking fast because this is now where all the action's happening. We've got a rock and roll. So we're now in a tungsten white balance. Look at that. You see how blue the sky has gone and how the yellow on the buildings has cleaned up massively. I'm not sure whether I like it. I think I almost prefer the yellowiness. But of course, there's all stuff you can do a bit of work with in post-production. These images that you're looking at, <clears throat> they've all had a little tweak to contrast and saturation. I haven't been massively photoshopping or anything like that. We'll see if we can show you on the back of the camera in a minute. Light's still changing. I'm going to go with another one. Let's just kind of see how it looks. And then we might just give it another couple of minutes. That sky is so strong. Look how strong that blue sky is. That's rock and roll. Okay, we're going to take another couple of minutes break and see what it looks like then. I know I'm incredibly yellow, and that's that white balance thing we were just talking about. This yellow light up here, right? It's producing yellow light, and that's landing on me, and that's why I'm still looking yellow. We haven't re-white balanced, because if we did, it would change the colour of the sky. I'm just going to shoot another picture, because we're going to lose this very soon. Now, what I'd really like is some people walking through the shot. Look at that sky. We're right on the edge now. This is where the magic's happening. Because I want someone walking through the shot, I think, oh no, they've gone up the hill. I'm gonna walk through my own shot. So what I'm gonna do is, we're on a four second exposure, that's quite slow. So if I hit the button and go, I think I heard the click. I should have recorded in my own photograph. There's a little bit of a blur. I think I was moving too fast. Look at that. I haven't even recorded. <clears throat> See, slow exposure, you can completely lose people from shots. So I'm gonna give it another go. I'm just gonna go more slowly. I think I heard it click. So there should be, hopefully, Look at that, you can hardly see me. There's a little bit of ghosting. There's next to nothing there. There's a tiny sparkle off the tinsel. You've got to keep really, really still. Let's just keep shooting though, because while this light is doing what it's doing, it's just, oh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Look, in just a few moments, as we just scan back through these pictures, see how the sky is completely changing as we come through. So join me again in a minute when it's got just that little bit darker. There's someone on a bicycle coming up the street, so I've just hit the go button to see if I can record their headlight. Look at that. See how it's put that gorgeous highlight on the side. There he goes, down there, look. I don't know if you saw him, you went around the back of us. I don't expect you saw him, did you, Lorna? Ah, oh, shame. But it's just as we were waiting, we were chatting, and I looked down there and thought, here's a guy on a bicycle, and the headlight on his push bike just put that highlight on the side of the building and it just kind of gives it that lift and makes it look that little bit more interesting. Keep your eyes open and be ready and don't stand around chatting like I tend to do. But that's me, isn't it? 
Let's take one more and see what's going on. Because it is starting to go very dark now. We've still got it though. I might have one last go at that one with me in it. So, Lorna, would you be able to come around behind the camera and press the button? Yeah, okay. I'll go and get in back here. Further forward, go. Did you press it? I don't think you did. Here you go. Oh, no. Oh, mate. Christmas time. time. Mistletoe, mistletoe and wine. wine. I've no. got some mistletoe if you fancy a quick. <laughs> no. no, no, it's best not to. <laughs> Have a good one, lads. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry mate. <laughs> Never mind. I don't know if that worked. Did you manage to press the shutter, Lorna? I think so. Let's have a look. Well, I nearly had a kissing taker, didn't I? Well, not nearly, and it's probably best not. Let's have a look. Here you go. I did manage to record in there. Yeah, you got that, Lorna. I don't know if it's blurry. Let's just zoom in and have a look. Yeah, a little bit, but it's not bad. And we've still got that colour in the sky going on. Let's see if we can get some more people. Of course, it would have been great to have had those lads when they came through to sort of give it some of that because, you know, it's Christmas. But of course, I was over there and, and should have been over here, etc. Right, I'm just going to let those people wander down. I'm going to now have deserted street pretty much all the time because of that slow shutter speed. People aren't recording on the sensor. Yeah, look, that sky's starting to go now. See, it's almost gone black. It's just on the edge. So, we've pretty much called it a night on this one. But you can see magic hour, this blue sky thing, it doesn't last very long. So if you're going to have a go at shooting a scene like this with that blueness going on up there in the sky, you need a bit of patience. Don't try and photograph tons of things at once. Just do one an evening because what, we've been here 10, 15 minutes and it's gone from this where it was too bright to what we've got kind of now, which is pretty much gonna be too dark, I reckon. So a quick look. Actually, it's still kind of hanging in there. We've still got some blue. What looks to your eye, how it looks to your eye is different to how the camera's gonna see it. Don't forget that because cameras see light completely differently to human beings. Quick look at a histogram. Yep, it's off down to the left, which is where we want it. We want a dark picture. So off to the left is good. So that's pretty much all there is to say on that one. Um, Lorna, come here, give me the camera because I think what we should do, let's grab Sorry. that and, hang on, we've got a, yes, mate? I, um, I've just got to tell you we're packing away. Well, no, carry on, that's fine, that's fine. That's all right, we're just doing a bit of filming. <laughs> Here you go. Lorna. Hello. We just want to wish you all a really happy Christmas. Come on. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.